What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are outside Le Poussin Rouge, and we happen to run into Camden from Seven Kingdoms again. Thank you for uh, your time today. Yeah, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to see you. Yeah, it's always a pleasure just to see you. It's wild that we just, you know, just so happen to be here yeah. with, with Evergrey, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so awesome to have you here. The Empty Eyes EP is the newest uh, taste of Seven Kingdoms we've gotten. It's an EP rather than a full length. Is there a specific reason why you chose to do, like, a EP series versus, like, just a direct full length follow-up to Dissidians? Yeah, so so for a young band like us, um, actually with the rec- or guidance of uh, some record label friends of ours, we went independent again for these coming up releases. Um, and the idea is that we're going to have four original songs and a cover for these EPs coming up, this one and then the next one. Um, and that allows us to kind of concentrate on five songs, make sure each song has a music video. Um, and kind of spread it out so that way if we're not on you know major tours immediately at least there's stuff dropping on our social media like every other month or something like that and it'll just keep us visible to the scene online you know what i mean yeah exactly i feel like you you have the best of both worlds where you're it's like a quality over quantity sort of thing but you're still consistent with pumping out content yeah exactly i mean the whole idea is that three to five years from now like the cd is probably going to be obsolete so it's going to be vinyl and digital and then streaming like that with like Spotify and stuff. And I mean, even with like the, the streaming platforms like Spotify, I mean, that's gonna evolve, I think, over the next five to 10 years, you know what I mean, into something new. So we're trying to adopt a new model that will be the model that everybody is using three to five years from now. So we'll be ahead of the curve a little bit. Um, so like I said, it's like every song on our EPs is gonna get a music video. Um, we, our Kickstarter's running right now. It's like got two or three days left. and. Uh, we already raised like sixteen thousand dollars for oh, that's an EP. Awesome. Yeah, I mean it's that's more you money have enough than for like five in there. Yeah, I mean it's just like it covered sixteen grand covers the recording costs, the promotion of the record, the merchandise for the the Kickstarter, and then also three more music videos. Wow. So it's like I mean I, the record labels we've talked to were afraid that they couldn't do that, and we did it in. 20 30 days like it was no no problem for us that's awesome and we have wonderful fans thank you very much um who have backed it so uh that's just the pre-order so we're really happy with it and then it'll go on sale independently with us um in october some uh, october 22nd i think and then uh i'm working on a distribution deal for europe um which we may do closer to the end of the year that's awesome. You kind of mentioned before we started rolling that you're, because, you know, a lot of people know you as kind of like the Game of Thrones-themed metal band, which, just for the record, I've never saw it, so I just enjoyed the music aspects without really uh, knowing what the hell you were yeah. all singing about. But you mentioned you're kind of like putting that behind you now, right? Kind of. I mean, with with the series over, the popularity of it is like... it's it, there's, not, there's, no, there's no real reason aside from just enjoying the, the, the stuff to do it honestly and it's just like i think we've done it for a long time i mean not every record is like all about it um we have usually have two to three songs about and or inspired by the game of thrones on each record like even the empty eyes ep has two songs on it Mm -hmm. out of the out of the five that are kind of game of thronesy um but like coming to the next ep um it probably won't have any sort of game of thrones subject because it's it's just gone and we're kind of I mean, I guess, yeah, we're moving on a little bit to something different, you know. Uh, I mean, it's always be a part of our past. I'm not saying we're never going to do it again, but, like, it's not really at the forefront of what we want to do right now. Mm. Do a, do, pick another show. Like, if you do a theme on Avatar, The Last Airbender, yeah. oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we do all kinds of stuff. I'm just not sure that, I mean, all, all of our records have different either personal stories or fantasy stuff or this and that. Um, but, I mean, we pull from literally anything so i mean if you go back and listen to all our lyrics i mean it's not really based on one thing it's just like if this if it fits the song that's what we do interesting so kind of leading into my next question do you have music written before like i know you don't you're not the vocalist but like do you have music like written and then the concept would come afterwards or does sometimes a concept come before and you would write according to that um rarely that way most of the time we have the general basis of a song without vocals on it and then we go and listen to the song and then kind of match up the song with the like lyric sheet that fits best essentially because like sabrina for instance and i mean everybody anyone that has lyrics they type up like a story you know what i mean that may not even be lyrics yet and it's just words and then we slowly uh 
work down until you get the lyric from those stories you know what i mean so like for instance sabrina will write like a three or four page just thing about whatever it is and then we will take that and with jim and the band we'll adjust and you know strike words out and start making it lyrics out of that story mm -hmm. um and that's actually been the best way we've done it so far rather than just do that is like get all the words out that you could possibly have and then find the best ones out of it essentially and structure your lyrics that way as a guitarist like are you following a music theory format like i'm working off of this scale and this chord progression or is it a lot of it improvised with us um we're not super like technical about like oh like we're in this i mean obviously we'll, we'll pick a key for the song and then we'll decide you know does do we do a key change anywhere here but that doesn't usually affect the the vocal like lyric wise it's just more of a a guitar bass kind of thing i mean usually we'll go like kevin and i or even tyler will have a riff and then we'll jam it out and then start piecing riffs together that fit even changing the key like it's we may have a riff in one song um and we'll gut that riff change the key so it fits this song and then completely scrap that other one you know what i mean because that was the best part of it you know what i mean so we have a thing called a riff bucket <laughs> so it's like we have like an idea and like it's just a riff and then we'll kind of pull from that if we're missing pieces um, from any of the songs and it'll it'll take form that way musically. Interesting. That's yeah. a very good way of putting it. It sounds like you, you, you know what you're doing, but there is some improvising involved as well. Yeah, I mean, we all, it's just what, it's really what sounds good. I mean, it, it changes. So it, each song takes probably four or five different versions um, before people actually hear like the record, the record version, you know what I mean? So, I mean, actually it's funny because the Kickstarter we have now, I think the some of the backers get the demos, mm -hmm. so they'll see the Empty Eyes demo and then the Empty Eyes song, and it's a pretty drastic change in structure, because um, actually we, we have we changed almost the entire pre-chorus between the demo wow. and the studio. So it'll be like, oh, okay, I see like what they did. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be interesting. The, the fans will get to see like how we made it what it was. You know what I mean? Because it's first incarnation, and then the, the final. You know what I mean? There you go. I always like asking the hardest question with every band. How do you know when a song is done? When you run out of time, <laughs> money, or you're just simply satisfied with it. Okay, fair enough. That was yep. quick, easy, and... Yeah, uh, I mean, that's it. Like, when you're in a studio, you're under a budget, and you get as far as you can with everything with the resources that you have. And uh, luckily, we've pretty much almost always finished, like, you know, an hour or two before we're supposed to. Because, like, yeah, it's good enough. Like... At the end of the day, we're happy with it. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And uh, last but not least, uh, let's do a... I, I believe I talked about it with you last time, but I honestly don't remember. Uh, do you just want to do a quick gear rundown? What is the weapon of choice that you use? Yeah, personally, um, well, Kevin, I guess I can speak for Kevin and I because we pretty much run the same rig. Kevin and I are... Uh, we have endorsements with Comparison Guitars and uh, EVH Amps. Um, uh, so both of us are playing the 50-watt 5150s, the 6L6s on a two two by 12 cab. We actually went down to the two by 12 cabs because they're just easier to carry and smaller for space. Um, both He has a comparison Dellinger loaded with bare knuckles. Uh, I have all the comparison orbits also loaded with bare knuckles. Um, Kevin goes straight into the head. He has like a tube screamer, a little noise suppressor and a tuner and like a, a, a baby wall pedal on it. That's it. He's real stripped down. Me, I have a I'm running a Horizon device in front of the overdrive channel. I have a delay, I have a phase 90, I have a tuner, uh, pedal board wireless, and a wall pedal. So, I mean, it's pretty, it's really stripped down. I have an rack mount decimator to okay. keep that 5150 quiet. Okay, so. there you go. It seems like you, you have a very simple, I, I can't tell if your rig is very simple or just like it takes you like two hours just to set up. No, every it's, night. it's pretty quick. I mean, the rack decimator is kind of the hardest because I have a cord tuner and then a rack decimator and then a drawer where I put all my stuff. So, it's like, that's only the hardest part is running the stuff through the effects. But it's really not hard at all. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty stripped down rig, honestly, I think. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. There you go. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thank it's you going to be much. a kick-ass show tonight, yep. and I look forward to Seven Kingdoms returning to the road. Is there just yep. uh, anything else you would like to promote uh, with the Empty Eyes EP? Can we be expecting you guys to take this on the road anytime soon? Yeah, we're hoping. We're actually looking for uh, some tour options for next year already. Um, we have some CD release shows in November at home. Um, the 22nd, 23rd, we're in Orlando and Tampa. Um, and then for the for the rest of the year, we're probably just gonna just chill at home and get ready for next year, whatever we do. 
Um, we have a couple options, but we're just weighing which one is the best right now. I mean, we're trying to, I'd really like to go get Europe again because it's been a long time since we've been there and it's kind of a priority for us. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, anything that works, we're going to do. So, I mean, we're not really looking forward to uh, touring by ourselves like we did in November, but like we're just wanting to jump on a tour where we can play in front of some other people's fans, you know what I mean? Because we're still a, you know, I wouldn't say a baby band, but we're a very small national band right now, you know what I mean? So we were really uh, interested in opening for a, a bigger bands at this, for this whole cycle, really. Yeah. So. Well, a lot, you made a great impression on a lot of my friends who saw you guys on 70,000 tons of yeah. metals. So. No, we actually applied for that, so if you're watching... We want to do it. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you so much, hey, Camden. Thank you very much, man. Everybody, Camden of Seven Kingdoms, Empty Eyes EP coming out in October. This is Alex from Heaven, New York. We'll see you next time.